silver ball From Soho down to Brighton I must have played them all But I ain't seen nothing like him In any amusement hall That damn dumb flag kid Sure plays a mean call a good car counter can take a casino for several hundred thousand dollars. As Paul Wilson's crew tries to bring down the house without getting crushed. I know of several people who have actually had their money confiscated and even been beaten. This outcome is all in the cards. And if things don't add up, someone's going down for the count. You're three to control where my officer's at. One man with something to prove. An elite team of con artists. A system they say is unbeatable, but they have an ingenious plan to take it down. Las Vegas. I've just hit a blackjack table with three card counters. When the card counting was working, Paul was making a lot of money. There's a problem, though. Someone at the table is carrying a cheating device, and security might be on to them. We're daring them to catch us. Our only chance of pulling this off is for everyone to stay calm and stick to our plan. The car counting is one of the things casinos fear the most. But we're going to go in with three systems, from the most basic to the most advanced, and see who makes the most. We don't have a lot of time. A lot of card counters will spend months hitting a place. We've got one night. Our target for this mission is Fitzgerald's Casino in Las Vegas. Theo Smith is director of table games. He got his start in Atlantic City back in the 80s. Today, he's one of the best in the business at busting card counters and cheats. Our security team is more than ready to take on Paul and his team. We've been looking for uh, some excitement like this for a long time. Theo's staff doesn't know we're coming, and even he doesn't know what we look like. But I'll have to be on top of my game to take these guys down. That's why I've put together quite a team of my own. Jennifer Erholm, a skilled actress and experienced gambler who spent years working as a blackjack dealer. We're going to flip her to the player side and see if she can make us a little money. Our mod squad is rounded out by Derek Delgadio, the Colorado Kid, an expert sleight of hand artist who's anxious to teach the casino a lesson. For me personally, I'm not in it for the money. It's the old story of David and Goliath, the little guy versus the big guy. And uh, it's the thrill of just taking that big winner down. We're going to count cards. Everybody knows what card counting is. For most people, they think it's a matter of memorizing cards that come out of the deck. In actual fact, as you know, it's about tracking the high cards and the low cards and knowing what's left in the shoe. The more high cards there are in the shoe, the more you should bet. Simple as that. We follow the cards to know exactly what's left in the deck. You track high and low cards by assigning them a value. Low cards, twos through sixes, are valued at positive one. Sevens, eights, and nines are neutral and count as zero. High cards, tens, jacks, queens, kings, and aces are valued at negative one. So our running count starts at zero. That takes us up to one. The more low cards that hit the table, the higher your positive three. count. This is a value of negative one, so that takes us back to two, three, four, five, six. I have a positive six count. At this point, we bet the farm. Once our count is firmly in the positive, we know the remaining cards in the shoe are most likely high value. The more high cards in the deck, the greater the odds of us catching winning hands and the dealer busting. That's when we bet big. Here's the kicker. We're not going into Fitzgerald's with just one card counting system. We're going to hit them with three. Jennifer will be using a very simple count. All she wants to know is, is the shoe positive or negative? And if she's in a positive shoe, she'll bet more. If she's in a negative shoe, she'll bet less. Simple as that. And when you're counting cards over and over, your brain just starts to, you know, it's, it's kind of mind-numbing, really. To add another wrinkle, I'll be providing Jennifer with a card counting device. It looks like a key fob, maybe something you use to open up a garage door. Okay, we've even put an apartment number on the back. For negative cards, you hit this button positive cards, you hit this button. If you have a positive count, you'll have long vibrations. Short vibrations, 
for a negative count. And to get the count, you simply hit that. Card counting is legal, but once Jennifer starts using this device, it's a felony. Derek will be using a more complex system known as a monster or knockout count. Once his count hits negative four or higher, he'll start making monster bets. I'll be using the most complex system of them all, the advanced point count. This involves counting every card, then dividing my count by the number of decks left in the shoe. My magic number for increasing my bets is positive four. Remember, you're working at the dealer speed. So when you practice, you have to practice fast. And the dealer's going to come around to you and ask you to make decisions. And if you look suspicious, people are going to be on to you very quickly. It takes thousands of rounds of blackjack to develop the discipline and skill to count cards. All right, who has a high count? Me too. Me too. We've had a lot of low cards. We know there's big cards on the way. This is exactly the kind of time you want to really up the bet. Oh, Here they come. All right, now the chances are, if our count is accurate, that that's more likely to be a 10 over there. Let's see the dealer busts. Too many. Hey. There you go. Off he goes. There's the ace. Mm. Oh. Like Jack. Ooh. Ooh, two aces. Mm. All right. So far, so good. Hey. Oh, that hand was shit. Okay, guys. Let's go, <laughs> <laughs> let's go to Vegas. You ready? Sin City, here we come. If things add up, we can count on teaching Theo Smith and his guys a serious lesson. Fitzgerald's Casino, Las Vegas. My crew is about to hit one of their blackjack tables with three different card counting systems. Remember, we're putting ourselves in the open here. We're daring them to catch us. The surveillance technology we'll be going up against is a major concern. Try to give me a facial on everybody. Make sure we have them in the face. Fitzgerald's even has a facial recognition system so that anybody walking in the door can instantly be put in a database. We zoom in on an individual's face. Got a good capture? Yep. Good. That's the great. computer captures his image and runs it through all the known uh, photographs that we have in the database. And all this takes place within a fraction of a second. But a professional card counter, the worst thing that can happen is that he be recognized and have his face posted and then distributed to other casinos. What's the point in counting cards if you can't play anywhere in town? Jennifer and Derek are the first ones in. I've brought in my buddy Bull to watch our backs. He's got a good eye for these things. My role was to distract the pit boss from coming near the table so he would not be so focused on them and more focused on me. How you doing? Good morning. I've also added another element to our plan. John Lovett, a highly skilled gambler and card counter. Just to throw security off, John will count cards at the table until I arrive. It's called back counting. Paul and I had arranged a verbal code, so I would keep the count. He would come up, ask if I was playing, and depending on what I said, I could indicate to him uh, whether the count was uh, high or low. When I arrive, John lets me know the count is low. Good morning, how are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'll be the biggest better at the table, but at this stage of the plan, I want to keep my wagers low until I get a strong positive count. We're into the first shoe. Hopefully our different counting systems can keep surveillance off balance. I'll be using one of the most difficult systems there is, the advanced point count. Once my count hits positive four, I'll start betting big. Once Derek's count reaches negative four, he'll do the same. And Jennifer's only following whether the shoe is positive or negative doesn't need to know if it's plus five or negative one. So far, our luck is terrible. But all we need to do is ignore the distractions and stay focused on the cards. You have to count every single card that comes out of the shoe. If you don't, your count will be off. Good. 
Half an hour in and this shoe stinks. It's always frustrating when you get a bad shoe because it just gets worse and worse like that one did. And uh, it went into the hole and never came out. Ah, I came out again. Loading. The next shoe wasn't much better. We've been through four cold shoes so far, and collectively, we're down more than a grant. Card counting is a real grind. It takes a large bankroll and lots of time to write out the highs and lows. In this case, a serious low. But after an hour or so, our luck begins to turn. Finally, we get a shoe that starts to show some potential. We up our bets, and we start hitting. This is the moment a card counter lives for. But just as the cards heat up, so does security. I have mixed emotions. We're starting to win big, but if they catch Jennifer with the illegal counting device, they could shut down the game and backroom all of us. After two hours of play, we're down nearly a grand, but things are finally starting to heat up. A lot of low cards come out, and that means that there's high cards left inside. But then it gets better and better and better, and suddenly I realize that we've got a super hot shoe here. I've counted almost no aces, and we're halfway through a six-deck shoe, and it's hot, hotter than hell. I go for it. on that table like a ton of bricks and suddenly I get people's attention. Surveillance. Okay, got it. What do you got the count at? It's a plus three right now. The operators in the room follow and they count every single card that comes out of the chute. What's the count now? It's a plus six. At the same time they're also watching all the players in the game. What was the count just then when he jumped in? When you get a hot shoe and it stays hot, the cards keep coming. There's no better feeling in the world if you're a card counter. The problem is, you can get so into what's going on at the table, you forget to watch your back. But to be honest, I was going for it. I was trying to grab as much money as possible. I wasn't being subtle at all. Next play at 11. All right, track the money. In the favorable count, we're watching to see if he's increasing his money. If he's increases his money, that's a tell for us that this may be a card counter. How much is he increasing his bet with the count? He increased his bet from $20 to $500. I'm getting all of this money. It's all flowing my direction, and I got a mountain of chips in front of me. Down on the floor, it looks like we've developed quite a fan club. This guy here was standing behind the game this whole time? Yep. Something's going on there. Right I see security head for bull first. Just like we planned it. I did my part. I took their eyes off of Paul and the table. So if it helped for five minutes, great. We got that much more money. But I still have a feeling they're on to me. Looks like we have a positive counter. Go ahead and notify the casino manager. Doing good. Table games here? Listen, right now, 
we prefer that you don't play blackjack here anymore? The other game I told like him himself. that he was more than welcome to play any other game in the house, that he was a little bit too good for us. Best, no, best night of my life. Best night of your life? Yeah. Oh, good. Just consider it the best night here at your life, because after that, you won't be allowed I'm to I'm up. Back. I appreciate the time. All right. You know what? This guy was real nice about it, real professional. Walked me to the cage. Ed, follow him to the cage and see how much he cashes in. Get a tighter shot. Right, I think I made up a couple of bucks. They backed me off, but not before I took them for five grand. Not bad for a day's work. The cashier is counting out the chips and then dealing out the cash. Let's get a facial shot out. And the whole time I keep my head down at the table because I know there's a camera there. Look up. Every card counter knows, keep your head down. Don't make it easy. Don't let them get a great shot of your face. And always have something you can uh, shave off for later. That's 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 22. This looks like you made out pretty good there. You know what? I made a few thousand dollars for my time. And if I'd been in there for the long run, it may have taken him a few days, maybe even weeks if I was lucky. But here, I hit them hard and fast, and they got me out harder and faster. OK, we got one counter out of here. Here's the beauty of having three card counters. Derek and Jennifer are still on the table, cleaning up. But if they catch Jennifer using the counting device, she's in big, big trouble. She's got a purse on her lap with her hand in the thumb. I just got kicked out of Fitzgerald's casino for card counting, but not before taking them for five grand. But just to prove a point, I've got Jennifer and Derek still in the game. There's only one problem. Jennifer's using the counting device I gave her. If security finds it, she's headed to the back room. So I tried to um, be really subtle, and I would stop using it for a while, but leave my hand kind of really close to my purse, so it looked like that's just what I was doing naturally. I swore that I even heard somebody say something about s something in the girl's purse. So I was like, oh, God. Turns out, surveillance had been watching Jennifer for some time. She's got a purse on her lap with her hand in it. One of the operators in the room picked up on a young female on the table that used her right hand and kept it inside of her purse. Get a tight shot of her hand. Watch her hand. We kept continuing watching her, and she never removed her hand. Definitely got something in there. We can tell that her hand was moving inside of her purse. That was a big, big key for us to keep an eye on her. We have another suspect on the table, I believe, she's using a device in her purse. After several shoes, I mean, I kind of thought that they had forgotten, or they maybe they weren't suspicious anymore. And before I know it, here comes security around the corner, and they were coming to get me. Excuse me, ma'am. I thought, oh my God, you do not admit to anything. You just keep your mouth shut and act like you have no idea what they're talking about and see what happens. Our surveillance team has found some irregularities in your play, possibly the use of some type of electronic device. My heart was pounding. And I was so completely nervous, I didn't, I had no idea what to say or what to do. Your date of birth, ma'am? Is Be it patient. mandatory that I'm giving you all this information? It's the first time we come across one of these, but it was just like, wow, the bells just went off for us. We do have a positive ID. This is used for counting there. Right. It was like, wow, I can't believe it. We just trained on this thing two months ago and seen it on the internet. And it's amazing. It's a very good device for, for an amateur car counter. Possession of a cheating device in the state of Nevada is a class B felony. With Jennifer in the back room and me out of commission, Derek decided it was time to call it a day. Robert, I think I'm going to walk away with it. All right, you want to color up? Can I? Uh, yeah, that's He cashed out for $1,100. Not bad at all. Color coming in. 
You know, we rolled the dice. We took an illegal device into the casino, and Jennifer got caught. But uh, you know what? That's what happens. If you want to learn to count, do it with your head. Don't rely on some stupid little gizmo. Derek and I head back to Fitzgerald's to get Jennifer and reveal the scam that took them for over six grand. The only chance we had was to bring in as many different variations as we could. One round and another round gave us a monster count and it delivered. But uh, what it delivered us was you. <laughs> Paul Wilson and his crew did an outstanding job. They came at us with all kinds of cheating moves. Two different kind of count systems, a cheating device, and at one point they even used a back counter. They worked well together as a team. So is she in the database then? She's in our database. It's the prettiest one we have in the database. When Paul revealed to me how him and his team did it, never again will I look at one person on the table where I'll look at everybody. Well, that's the thing about the cat and mouse game. So long as you've got the cheese, the mouse is always thinking. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you for your time, Leo. Thank you. Thank you. My crew is now persona non grata at Fitzgerald's. But last time I checked, this town was lousy with blackjack tables. All of them just waiting to be taken down.